Hey there, at your face space. Today we're going back to meet an old friend, the pendulum. But there's no analytical solution either. We have to solve this equation numerically. But in any case, this differential equation already contains information we can extract. We have already studied the pendulum. We know that there are no analytical solutions, unless we restrict ourselves to small oscillations. Let's study the pendulum from a different perspective now. We won't try to find an equation to describe its motion, because we know there is none. But let's plot it in phase space. That means let's plot the velocity versus the position. Or in this case, let's plot the angular velocity theta dot versus the angle theta. To do that, I'll focus on the energy of the pendulum. The equation of motion for the plane pendulum is theta 2 dots plus omega naught squared sine of theta equal to zero. Which is the small, in the small angle approximation, this is theta 2 dots plus omega naught squared theta equal to zero. There is a beautiful graphical justification for the small angle approximation. If we plot the force as a function of the angle theta, we see that the function about the origin, it can be considered as a straight line. But we won't be talking about the simplified version of the pendulum. We're grown-up physicists now, and we need to come up with suitable tools to face the full plane pendulum. In the absence of friction, this is a conservative system, so the energy is conserved. K plus U is E, and this is a constant. The kinetic energy is written as... and the potential energy is written as... Let's assume that when the pendulum is at its minimum height, that is the origin of the potential energy. And let's call theta naught the angle when the pendulum is at its maximum height, also with maximum potential energy. I'll focus in the particular case where we have the pendulum vertical and we release it from there. That is a point of equilibrium. The pendulum could stay there forever, but the smallest perturbation will kick it out of there and the pendulum will move down. So, up there the kinetic energy is zero, the potential energy is maximum and equal to the total energy. Let me use some trigonometry to rewrite the kinetic and potential energies. From here, I can solve for the angular velocity. This is an exact solution. This is the angular velocity as a function of the angle. For a total energy, equal to the potential energy of the pendulum at rest at the top of this circular trajectory. Let's plot this. I'll plot theta dot over the square root of g over l versus theta, and I'll do it assuming that the length is 9.8 and theta naught is pi. But I can plot it for a pendulum with less energy by imposing that theta naught is smaller than pi. For small angles, I can use the approximation and the paths in phase space are circles as expected for a simple harmonic oscillator. In this phase space we see that the energy is smaller than 2 gml. We can say that the system is bound in a potential well. The positions of theta 0, theta 2 pi, theta negative 2 pi are stable equilibrium points. 
the positions of theta pi, theta negative pi are unstable equilibrium points. For energies greater than E0, the pendulum goes around and around and it never has a zero velocity. Then the trajectory is not a closed trajectory in phase space. It is an open trajectory. The boundary between oscillatory closed trajectories and non-oscillatory, although periodic, open trajectories passes by the unstable equilibrium points. May the science be with you. Mm -hmm.